My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop and we're going to start another series, why not? And it's, like not it's not like there isn't enough of them. <laughs> so today what I want to talk about, and this is, you've seen the title, it's W and W or W squared or whatever I decide to call it. Stick it in the comments if you've got a good idea. But basically it's weird and wonderful. Um, so today what I want to talk about is some of the weird and wonderful designs out there. And just to stop all you guys tapping in loads of shit into the comments, um, the Honda Roval piston, that's one thing we're going to look at. The Buell front disc brake, we're going to look at that. V5s in general, uh, the V8 Ducati, we're going to look at the 675 Triumph um, Daytona, the three cylinder. We're going to look at um, the CX500 twisted cylinders, Motor Guzzi transverse cylinders. Um, BMW's additional additional piston uh, crank rod, uh, con rod that's in their engine. We're going to look at um, gear driven Honda. Basically, there's quite a few Hondas that, uh, quite a few bikes, but Honda in particular, who have um, the camshafts driven by a gear arrangement. Uh, we're going to look at BMW's funky little shaft drive. We'll look at um, a few others that I don't want to mention because I don't want to spoil it because a, a lot of you won't have seen these before because they're quite cool. Uh, we're going to look at the Norton Rotary and five valve heads and stuff like that. But today, at the joy of a lot of people, we are going to look at the CX500. Um, the CX500 twisted cylinder. So, um, also known as the chuffing elephant, uh, Honda made the CX500 back in the 70s and what they wanted to do is they wanted to have uh, a V-twin engine that had its banks, you know, left to right instead of front to back. And one of the problems with this, looking from above, is if you have a cylinder here going this way and a cylinder here going this way, um, your tank is here and then you, your ass cheeks are here and then your knees obviously naturally go this way, like so. Now, you don't actually hit the cylinders because your knees are clear of them and the engine's pushed a bit forward of that. But what happens is, is obviously, if we just look at the cylinders on their own, you have cylinder bank, cylinder bank, and this is from above. And obviously, you have to have inlets and exhausts. Now, the exhausts, you don't care about that much because they're facing away from you. But having your carbs and all this jobby in the way, even if you had a carb here and you had vents that went up like this, it has to straighten out at some point and it's going to foul with your knees and all the rest of it. So Honda, they're clever little bastards, in one of, it's such a good move because it just demonstrates the fact that everything doesn't have to be the way you think it is. Um, and it's a brilliant demonstration of that. So what they did was is if we just look at the cylinder head and we'll say that's forward that's 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 forward like so obviously you'll have your inlet port here and your exhaust port there kind of thing like you would in a normal cylinder head but what they decided to do was to twist the whole thing so they put a twist on this cylinder to face this way like that so now we can get rid of these bits and instantly what you'll notice is if you do that then you can move your port so one's there and then your exhaust is there and because like I said before we don't give a shit which way your exhaust ports at points your exhaust can just curl around and do whatever it needs to do the important thing is is your carbon whatever can go here and your legs can fit in this area here it doesn't really matter where your legs go now because they're not fouling because the, the carbs are underneath you so what they've done is they've twisted the head, and I'm sure it's off the top of my head. <laughs> Dickhead pun. Uh, I'm sure it's 20 degrees. I'm sure that's how much they twisted it by. So if you were to measure that centre line to the centre line it's at now, I'm sure it's 20 degrees. Someone will tell me in the comments if I'm completely wrong. But off the top of my head, it's out there, it's 21, but it's close to that. But obviously this causes an issue because generally with V-twins and all other bikes is that you have your cylinder head with all your pokey pokey valves in and what have you and then you'll have a camshaft sat in the middle with some rockers and what have you blah 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 
and then you have your pots, your cylinders, and then you have the rest of your engines sat down here. Now, you know, generally what we do is we have a crankshaft and then we have a, a chain or a belt, but generally a chain that goes straight up because it's in line. You know, chains don't like twisting, especially at high speeds. Um, so you've got a problem now because what you've done is you've turned the cylinder. So in a sense, if we were to redraw this, our camshaft now looks like this. And we can't stick this chain on there. Now you could do some sexy things with the belts and you can twist belts and so on and so forth. But this is, um, you know, this is the 1970s. They're not going to fuck around doing with that. They'll do a much easier and a, a trusted, um, you know, a trusted way of doing it. So what they do is they kind of go the American route of all things. So they get rid of the camshaft in the head, and they put a camshaft up here in a in in an in block camshaft, which is quite rare for bikes. They make the cylinder bigger, they make the cylinder head bigger, and then basically they have push rods. They have push rods that basically just um, interact with the valves directly, and that's what they do. Because the push rods, you see, the push rods, you can have the opening there, which is this bit down here, and you can have your push rods, that's where they are there, and at the head, you can twist this, but the rods don't care. The push rods will just basically line up whichever way you want to twist them. You know, the rod itself isn't twisted, it just, it has to pick a two-dimensional point. So they hit the cams here, and then at the top they can translate to a different rotation. And in, in, in reality, it's not offset like that, just to make it clear. In reality, there's two points there, which is this bit, and then over the top, there's your 20 degree angle at the top of the head, and then any misalignment, so these are now here and here, the push rods can basically deflect because it's point to point contact. You only care about two points at the top, two points at the bottom where it's at the cam and the followers and all the rest of it, and that's all you care about. Well, it's actually rockers down here, but um, it's just two points that you need to care about. And you can twist a rod, and you have a rod like this. If you have two points that are perf you know, basically in line with each other, you can twist that off in any direction you want, it doesn't really matter. And that's exactly what Honda did. So they have push rods, um, you know, a push rod engine, basically like a, an American V8 or something like that, where they have a camshaft in block and some rockers and or what have you, and they have push rods up to the heads. This was just to initially just give this 20 degree twist so your knees wouldn't foul. So you can see it's a very rare, um, it's a very rare example of the entire engine architecture being changed due to just a rider existing or someone being there. You know what I mean? The fact of the matter is it would be so much fucking easier just to have the inlets go in and the exhausts go out, but you know, people's knees and all the rest of it, and you could fuck around and Honda just come out with quite a nifty, um, just a nifty different way of doing it. Uh, which was, uh, you know, a tried and trusted technology. That's the thing, twisting belts and stuff. Eh, wow, do you want to do that? It is quite heavy and all the rest of it, and there are, you know, valve lash and all sorts of other issues with it and what have you, but this was the 1970s. So that's just um, one, that's the first one off the list. I'll take that now. <laughs> that's um, the first one off the list of the weird and wonderful. Um, we'll do other things, I've mentioned a few, but I'll just explain some of the things that you might not have seen. Um, some are, you know, big ones, big obvious ones like Honda's oval pistons and what have you, you know, if you haven't seen that one, where the fucking hell have you been? Where stuff like this, you know, a lot of people might not be aware of it, and I've got quite a lot more of things that people aren't that quite aware of. If you do have a suggestion and I didn't read it out at the beginning, um, don't put it on the comments. If you have a suggestion, send me an email, send me a Facebook thing, because in a sense I don't want to spoil it for other people. You know, the CX500 is a soft one really, but there's, there's, there's three I can see here that are really unique and strange and most people would have never even one dreamt of it or two um, know it exists or know it existed let's put it that way hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit <laughs>